In fact, when you had it, you felt really guilty about it because it was one that was so obvious I'd made a mistake and so obvious that I shouldn't have bought it and it wasn't going to work for me that when I did look at it, it's kind of screamed at me, you silly, silly person, you've made a big mistake. So I felt really awkward with it and I felt quite guilty. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I want to share with you the bags that I wouldn't buy again. These are all bags that I have owned and something about them, I just wouldn't buy them again. I have nine on this list and all but three of them I have actually sold. There's just been something about them that didn't work out and I want to share that with you today in case you're interested in any of these bags. And this might give you some insight as to why they didn't work for me and for the vast majority of them, I've actually sold them on and the others I just wouldn't buy again. And the first one, <laughs> this still pains me. The first one is the Chanel Boy Bag. I really wanted this bag to work. I really wanted to love this bag. This was the first Chanel bag that I ever bought. So I really wanted it to work because I'm a sentimental Sally. I can remember being in Chanel in London with my husband. I've told this story before. I saw the Chanel boy across the way. Mine had the top handle. It was the gray version with the burgundy around it. It was the Paris Salzburg collection. I absolutely loved it. To look at this bag, I absolutely loved it. I bought this bag probably a good bit before I really should have been spending the money on Chanel prices, but I just couldn't let it go. I loved it that much. I remember trying it on in the store. The only thing I was slightly unsure about was the length. And I remember looking in the mirror and think, I don't know if that length really works for me, but I loved the bag so much I went ahead and bought it. And this is one of the lessons that I've learned and this is one of the things that I wish I'd known before I started buying luxury. If you're standing in the store and you're trying that bag on and there's something about it that's niggling at you, if you have a little doubt, if your gut feeling is saying something to you that this bag just isn't right or you just don't love something about it, don't do it. Put the bag back on the shelf and get out of the store. Don't do it. I did it. And that bag never really worked for me. It just, the length that it sat at, I just didn't love. And I know length is very, very personal to everybody, but I just, I just didn't love it. And then I never really used that bag. And it was my first, and it was supposed to be such a wondrous experience. And I wanted to love it and I didn't. And I should have listened to that gut feeling in my pit of my stomach when I was trying it on. And I shouldn't have listened to the sales assistant who was telling me it was perfect. And I wasn't confident about buying luxury at that time. I wasn't confident about what worked for me and what didn't. And I had a lot to learn. I'd only started this craziness. I shouldn't have bought it and I would not buy another boy because I know that just doesn't work for me. And as much as I see some beautiful colors in them, it's just not the right bag for me. Number two is one of the three that I actually still have in my collection and it's the Chanel Gabrielle bag. I just don't love this bag if I'm honest. I have talked myself around this bag in circles. I've driven myself crazy wanting this bag to work, wanting to love this bag, wanting to use it more. I love the look of it when I see it. I absolutely love it. I, I just don't love it though. I don't love it when it comes to using it. There's something about it that just, it's not one of my favorite bags to use. It's not one of my favorite bags to lift. There's just something about it that means I don't really use this bag. And I wouldn't buy another one. Even though I did see one in a bright orange, the orange was stunning. I missed out on the classic flap in that color. I knew I didn't buy it. I knew I loved the color, but not in the Gabrielle. It just doesn't really work for me. And I think it's stunning and I want it to work for me. And I can see why people love it. I can see why it's a favorite from some people. It just, it just doesn't work. I just don't reach for it. And this is a bag that I wouldn't buy again. And I probably am gonna let go because I've tried with this bag for so long. And for me personally, it just doesn't work. Number three is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini. When I first bought this bag, I admit that I was caught up in the hype a little bit. It was very, very hard to get and then it became available during lockdown. I saw it on the website and I jumped on it. And don't get me wrong, I did love it. I did love the shape. I thought the little backpack was very quirky. I liked that about it. I didn't use it a huge amount though. I used it a bit. I can remember using it when we stayed at home during lockdown and went on a staycation. I used it a couple of times not very much though. There was just not, there was just something about it that I didn't really reach for this bag. I always wore it crossbody. I never wore it as a backpack. I always wore it on the diagonal crossbody. It's another bag that because it was a mini backpack, I thought I should love it and I thought it should work for me and I thought I should have it on my shelves in my collection and it's a bag that I really 
wanted to work and to be quirky and love, it just didn't work. I just, I just didn't love it that much. I didn't wear it that much. I have other monogram bags. I have the Papillon trunk. I have the pa or the multi pochette, which is really usable for everyday life. This one, just something about it, didn't love it and I sold it and I've no regrets about selling it. Since I sold that bag, I've never thought about repurchasing it. Same with the boy, I've never regretted selling that, never thought about repurchasing that. Palm Springs Mini, I wouldn't bag in. Number four is a whole category of bags and I would not buy another bucket bag. And I have tried. I had the Chanel bucket bag, which I absolutely loved. Loved the look of it, thought it was stunningly, stunningly beautiful. This is now with one of my fabulous subscribers who I'm still in touch with on Instagram and it's living its best life with this person. It's going around the world. It's having a great old time to itself. For some reason, even though I love the look of this bag, I love the rolled up bucket bag, I love the caviar, I love the jewellery like chain on it, I thought it was stunning, just didn't use it. I think the whole time I had that bag, I can remember using it once, that's all. And it was a bag that I had been obsessed with, I had chased down, I had paid a reseller to find, very, very popular bag, very difficult to get in the small size, just didn't work, I just, I just didn't work. I didn't carry it handheld enough. I didn't really like it crossbody. I thought it sat out, was a bit bulky. Bucket bag just didn't work for me. I also had the Fendi Montresor, which is a mini version of a bucket bag. It was much smaller. It was neater. It was the Fendi Zucca print, but it was in a red color with the neutral beige. It was beautiful. It was leather. It was stunning. Didn't use it. I think I used that bag once the whole time I had it. That bag I bought because I loved the print. I was drawn to the colors. I did not think through the practicality or lack thereof for me of using that bag. Bucket bags for me just don't work. And as much as I see some now and I think, oh, that's pretty. Oh, I like the colors on that. I won't buy another one because I know it doesn't work and I have to get better at appreciating the beauty of the bag from afar, loving the color, loving the shape, loving the pattern but not buying it because it doesn't work for me. Number five, and this is a bag that I really, really wanted to work for me because I love it and it's the Chanel Trendy. I love this bag aesthetically. I love the big bar across it. I don't really like the new version. The new version has a woven CC on the leather and then the bar across the top where it had Chanel printed has a woven sitting up Chanel. I don't really like that. I like the old version, which has the bat, the panel, the big bar that says Chanel. It looked like some people said a granny's bag. It had the three compartments, the accordion style. Mine was in a beautiful petrol blue. Stunning, stunning bag. I still think this bag is stunning. This is one of those bags that when I'm in Chanel or when I'm looking on the internet, I have to speak to myself because I see it. And I think that's beautiful. Clearly I was bonkers and it would have worked and I just didn't give it a big enough chance or I didn't try this or that or something else that's never going to happen and I have to remind myself, you had that bag. You did try to wear that bag. That bag didn't work. I could wear it crossbody but it's quite bulky crossbody, sits out quite a bit. For me, handheld, I did wear it, I remember once with my Gucci cardigan. I tried to make it less formal by putting it with something very playful and very bright. Loved the look of it, just didn't wear it. Too formal, I think, maybe, for carrying. Too elegant, maybe, just didn't work. And lambskin as well, you need to be careful with it. The corners can curl, it can mark. That's not even the main reason for me because I'm not somebody that's overly fussy about taking my bags out. I pretty much use them, apart from the odd, maybe that petite mal that has the gray, fabric on it, but I pretty much use my lambskin bags. So it's not even really that reason. I just didn't reach for it, didn't love it. And as much as I think it's stunning to look at, and I very, very tempted, I have to remind myself each and every time, you're not buying another one of them because it doesn't work. Number six, and this bag's getting a battering from me lately, and it's the small lip bag or the lip PM from Louis Vuitton. I do have a review on this. I go into detail about why it's very, very annoying and why I don't enjoy using it and why it annoys me when I use it. And for that reason, I won't buy another one. Even though they bring these out in fabulous prints, fabulous colors, lots of different designs and fabrics and ways of this, no, it's annoying. It's annoying to use. I find it annoying. I'm not buying another one. And if you're interested in this bag or you want to know more about why this bag is so annoying to use, go and watch that video. Watch it before you would buy it if you're interested in this bag. It's 
gonna work for a lot of people, but just in case you're like me and this would drive you mad, the zip and oh, it would drive you nuts. If you're like me, watch that video just to be sure before you spend your money on this bag. Next is the Chanel Deville. Oh, I loved this bag from afar. I loved, I had the pink version with the glitter through it. I loved the glitter thread. I thought it was absolutely stunning. When I saw it on Instagram, beautiful, beautiful bag. Pictured my fantasy life. Pictured myself strolling down the promenade. Don't know where my children were because they weren't in my fantasy. Don't know where my four dogs were because they weren't in my fantasy. I was just strolling down the promenade. Oh, and by the way, I lived beside the beach and the sea was flapping in and it was a beautiful evening every single time I thought about this bag. And the palm trees were flowing in the wind as I walked along with my Chanel de Ville. I would love that to be my life. I really, really would. Well, as long as my children are there and the four dogs are there, but I would love it to be in that setting. It's not. And the Chanel de Ville then just didn't work for me. I did think that I would sometimes swap out of it and use the Deville for work instead of the Neverfull. I thought I could do that in the summer because mine was the light pink color. I never ever did. I never even thought to use that bag to take it for work. I never even looked to use it. I didn't even really went and look to pick it up. Didn't. It, it was one of those bags that as soon as I bought it, hung it on the shelf, realized, oh, what have you done? You're not going to use that bag. And I used it once when I made myself use it. I actually reminded myself to use it. Didn't even think about coming out of the Neverfill into it. So I've learned my lesson. And it's another bag that there are fabulous versions of. And I have to remind myself, didn't work. Never used it. In fact, when you had it, you felt really guilty about it because it was one that was so obvious I'd made a mistake and so obvious that I shouldn't have bought it and it wasn't going to work for me that when I did look at it, it's kind of screamed at me, you silly, silly person, you've made a big mistake. So I felt really awkward with it and I felt quite guilty and I definitely, definitely know more Devils. Number eight is the Chanel 19. And this is nothing about this bag because I really love this bag. I still love this bag. I find it very, very usable. I just don't think I need another one of this. This is one of those bags that I think one is enough. These are very, very expensive now. I think they're somewhere around 5,000 pounds. I have a lot of smaller Chanel bags and other bags that are in lots of different colors. So if I was going to buy another one of these, it would be to add another color. I probably more than likely have a version of a bag somewhere in the color that I would look to buy because I don't stray very far from the same color range. I generally buy bags that are all kind of tonally linked in color. So if I was to look for another one, it would be to have a slightly bigger bag in the Chanel 19 that goes cross body in a different color. I don't need that. I have so many around me that fill that, that this one being black, and I'm not a black bag lover, but this one is so practical. It goes with everything. It's That's the beauty of a black bag, wouldn't you know? It goes with everything. I can wear this every time I need to wear a Chanel 19. I love it enough for being a black bag. There's enough going on with this, with this big chain and the big tacky CC. There is enough about this that I love this as a black bag. So I don't need another one. I'm happy with this one. It's not going anywhere. I love it. I enjoy using it but I don't need another one. I did think about this little Chanel that's over in the corner here. You can see in this beautiful, beautiful color, Luxon lipstick had this bag, this bag in this color. And when I used to see it on the channel, I would have thought, I really want that. But it was being drawn to the color. It was what we're talking about, about loving it, appreciating it, but don't need to own it in a 19. I did think about it because I'm crazy, but I didn't need to get it. And I would be buying it to have a bigger version in that color when I have that exact, exact color over there. So this is a bag I love, but one of them's all I need. And number nine, the last bag on my list is a camera bag. I had a Chanel camera bag with the charms on it. It was stunning. I love the charms. I bought it because it had the charms. I didn't really know if a camera bag would work for me. I kind of assumed it would because the Chanel Mini works for me, but it didn't really. I didn't like the way it hangs. I didn't like the way it sat. It hangs on the camera bag. The chains are attached to the side. So whereas on the Chanel Mini Rectangle, the chains come up from the grommets at the top, the camera bag's a kind of square shape and the chains attached to the side and it sits with the chains coming halfway down the bag on the side. I just didn't love that about it. I didn't love the way that it hung. It did hold a lot. It was a very easy to use bag, but that about it just annoyed me. And most camera bags seem to be the same. Now, I really would have loved that bag with those charms in a Chanel 
mini if it came in a mini or a classic flap or even a jumbo if I could have made it work. You see that? There you go. Because I like the charms, I'm talking about sizes of bags I'd never use. But I loved it. So I really, really loved the charms and I did eventually let that go because I was only keeping it because it had the charms on it. This one had the lipstick, it had the CC, it had the Paris. It was all the Chanel Paris charm collection. Beautiful, beautiful bag. Only kept it as long as I did because of the charms and I didn't really want to let it go because I loved the charms. Really, I would have been better with a different version of the bag with those charms on it. That one just didn't really work for me as the camera bag and I think it taught me that camera bags in general, if that one didn't work because it was stunningly beautiful with those charms, if that one didn't work, no camera bag's going to work. I'm not going to enjoy the shape. I'm not going to wear the shape. I know the YSL one's very popular. Lots of people have it. It's not for me though, it just doesn't work. That shape has been tried and tested and I have learned my lesson and I won't be buying any more camera bags. So these are the nine bags that I will not buy again. Six I've already sold, three I still have. Two of those three might be being sold on to be honest with you because they're just not working for me. I hope this has been informative and if you're looking at any of these bags, hearing this insight into why they didn't work for me or what was about them that I just didn't get on with, I hope it's giving you some further information. Thank you so much for watching me. If you have enjoyed this in any way, please do consider or giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing. And if you're not done with me yet, I'm going to leave another video for you on the screen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.